Hello, let us now start with the question L. It is comparatively a difficult question, but not that difficult also. So let's try to understand. Uh, L says that box P or Q implies box T or box Q. The first step would of course be negating the conclusion, which is this one. I negate it and then this is our term A, this is our term B, and I can see that I have to apply the beta rule of implication. So by applying the beta rule of implication on one, I can write these two steps, right? And now I have a box here, uh, and here I have a negation in front of a box, uh, this junction box Q. So I cannot directly apply the modern rules here, I'll have to work with this negation. So this negation in the main operator of this junction uh, gives me only one option, which is in the beta rule of this junction. So apply it on three and get these two steps, uh, four and five. Uh, the beta rule of this junction says that if P or Q is not true, then not P and not Q. So after reaching to these steps, further simplify them because I have negation in front of the box. I can write it as diamond knot and diamond knot. I applied M1 rule on 4 and 5. Then, using this diamond, uh, that I told you, right, that uh, the number of diamonds will decide the number of possible worlds that we are going to open. If two diamonds are there, that means we have to open two possible worlds. So, the, with the first diamond, I open the world 1, and by applying rule M4 on 6, I write this, not P at 1. And by applying the rule M4 on this diamond, Diamond 7, we open another world because there is another diamond. My, by applying the rule M4 on 7, I get this. After getting these two, now I am left with this box. Now I can use this step 2 again here in step 12, right? By writing, uh, by using the rule M3 on 2 and this world, so using 2 and 8 and 12, I can write P or Q in world 1. Now I have to apply the alpha rule here because I have no negation here and this just says P or Q at 1 by applying the alpha rule it says that if A or B is the case then either A is the case or B is the case. This is the alpha rule, right? So by applying this alpha rule here I say that P at 1 and Q at 1. But since we had not P at 1 here this branch is already contradicted so that we don't need to move in this direction anymore. Since the branch has been contradicted. Let us look what is the case on the other side of the branch. Q1. Q1 has not yet been contradicted, so we need to move forward. Uh, now, as I told you, our first step was simplifying, right? Our second step was using the diamond to create possible words, which we did here and here. Our third step was using the boxes with all the possible words that we had opened, right? So we, are, we have used this box once with 0 R1. Now we need to use it again with 0 or 2 because boxes are necessary statements, right? Uh, if words are already present there, if possible words are already present there, those would necessarily be true in those possible words also. If those possible words are connected with the world 0. Here we can see uh, world 1 was connected to world 0, so we use the box with 0 or 1. And world 2 is also connect connected with world 0, so we will use that box again with world 2. By using uh, 2 and 10 this time, by using 2 and 10 this time, I can write P or Q in world 2. Here again, I'll have to apply this alpha rule of this junction, which would say P at 2 and Q at 2. Now, we can see that not Q at 2 was the case, and Q at 2 is the case here, so this runs all the process, but for P, and at 2, we don't have any contradiction, therefore this branch would remain open. Uh, we knew at the beginning that this sign meant that this argument was invalid, so definitely this truth tree had to remain open at the end, which it did. So we did the right thing. But the second part of the question says that now we have to write the values and make counter models. How do we do that? You can see here that all the instances of the branch that did stay open, all the particular instances, I'm going to write them here. One was P at 2, then going further up, it was here, Q at 1, then going further up the branch because we are talking about the whole branch, right? The whole tree. So, what 
be not q at 2 going further up in this direction I find not p at 1 so these were the four particular values that we got while making this troops tree now we have to mention in w the number of words that existed in our troops tree we had the word 0 then we opened opened the world 1 here so we had world 0 world 1 and then we also opened the world 2 here so we had three worlds in total world 0 world 1 and world 2 so i write them like this in front of worlds w which means worlds then the relations that existed 0 r1 and 0 r2 there were two relations relations 0 r1 and 0 r2 now for values what we need to do is how we write the value of a particular proposition in that particular world is somewhat like p value of p in world 2 world 2 will be written here world 2 value of p in world 2 equals to 1 if it is valid and 0 if it is invalid 1 because we had p here and value of p in world 2 which value of p in world 2 was 1 value of p in world 1 also here was 0 since it had a sign of negation in front of it so we write value of p in world 1 was 0 similarly value of q in world 1 here you can see was 1 and value of q in world 2 as you can see here was 0 since it had a negation in front of it value of q in world 2 is 0 these are the four values that we write now the counter model is nothing but the diagrammatical representation of the case when that thing was when the assumption was valid and the case where that argument proved to be invalid so we have to diagrammatically represent that case here so we are doing that only there was world one there was world two and there was world world one and world two so world zero world one and world two what were the relations world zero was related to world 1 and world 0 was also related to world 2. These arrows represent nothing but that R that we wrote. This R in the relation. Now we have to mention the particular values. Value of P in world 2 was 1. So we write just P. Let me write just P here. Value of P in world 1 was 0. So we have to write not P here since this was the value of P in world 1. So I write not P here. Then value of q in world 1 was 0 so i'll write not q here and value of q in world 2 was 0 again sorry 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 value of q in world 1 was 1 so i write 1 q here and value of q in world 2 was 0 so i write not q here. this is the counter model this is called the counter model let's move on to the next question next question is the question m as you can see box p box not q does not logically imply that box p and q first step is writing the premises again so i wrote the premises again then the conclusion was this we have the sign of not logical implication so we know that the branch is going to stay open at the end if it does not we are doing something wrong so the third step would be then negating this conclusion so we do that after applying uh, rule m1 on 3 we get this since it was a knot box we wrote it as diamond knot then since we have a diamond we'll open a new world and this, this new world we'll be able to write this new world was world 1 so in that world 1 this would be the case again using m4 on 4 then I see I have to use beta rule of implication so the main operating implication there's a negation in front of it so I write p1 q1 by applying the beta rule of implication in 6 then after writing this I have to apply the rule M3 on 1 and 2. So 1 and 2 were left. I have to use these boxes. That was my third step, right? Using the boxes with the wall that I've already opened. I used this wall that I already opened with 1 and 2. And I wrote P1 and not Q at 1 using M3 on 1 and 2. Now we can see that there was no contradiction. P1, P1, not Q1, not Q1. It did not contradict itself. The branch remained open. Similarly, uh, like the last question, we would write the words that existed, the relations that existed, and the values, and then represent them in the diagram. The counter model would look something like this. The next question is question N. Again, we write the premises, then we negate the conclusion here. 
can apply uh, the rule M2 because the negation goes in front of the diamond. So we wrote this. Then since uh, we could not solve it further, we use these diamonds to open new world. 0 R1 here. Uh, I opened the world 1 here and then I wrote this as this using the rule M4. Then I used this box here only. I did not open the world 0 R2 here. I could have. But then that would have led to me writing this again that there in world 2 and since it was a branching rule the beta rule of conjunction since it was a branching rule I, I wanted to go this way first right the other way would not have also been wrong so I went this way and I would use this box first with the world that I opened here because of that I had opened these branches when I opened the branch I could see that P at 1 and not P and at 1 were the contradictions here so the left branch goes on the right branch then I use this other diamond to open another world in that world I applied to root M4 and then I use this box again since I have told you many times that boxes can be used as many times as you want with the possible worlds with the possible worlds the only condition being is that this box exists in world 0 if this box exists in world 0 I can only use it with all the diamonds that open a possible world called from world 0 ok what I meant was is agar yahan pe 0 hai saamne mein 0 ko sirf unhi worlds ke saath use kar sakta hoon jis 0 se start ho raha hai or the worlds that are accessible to world 0 so I can use it here because it's 0 R1 and I can also use it here because it is 0 R2. Since it is 0 R2, I can use this box again and write that not P at Q at 2 and then again applying the beta rule of conjunction. I say not P at 2 and not Q at 2. This not Q at 2 is again contradicted by this here. So this branch you can open again. We write the values and then make a count model. The next question is the question O. Uh, now the rest of the questions are fairly simple. Next question is question O. I read this by negating the conclusion, then I apply the beta rule. Nothing can be done further, so this is it. We we say that the branch is open, we mention the value of relations in the world and make a counter model. The counter model will look something like this. Next question is the question P. Again we negate the uh, conclusion, apply the beta rule of implication, and then after applying the rule M2, we are left with this and the branch remains open. We mention the world relation with the values and make the output. Next question is question Q. Again, uh, we mentioned the first premise. Again, here as it is, we, we negate the conclusion in the next step. After negating the conclusion, we, we apply the rule M1, M1 on 2, and write it as box not P, uh, not will come here. Then, since it's uh, sorry, diamond not P. Diamond will come here since box negation in front of the box becomes negation diamond. This is rule M1. So by applying this rule M1, I get diamond in the front, and when we have a diamond, diamond we have to open a new world. I open a new world, and that world I can say that not be the case, it still remains open. And we can mention the world, the relation, the values, and make a counter model. In the next question, again, this is the conclusion and it is not logically right so we negate the conclusion apply the beta rule the beta rule of implication uh, that gives a these two steps then here I can see that it's not box so I will write it as diamond not which is nothing but the rule m1 and the rest I copy it as it is now since I have a diamond here I'll open a new world this would be the case in that new world this is the case in that new world now again there was a negation in front of the box so I again wrote it as diamond not which is again the rule M1. Now since I had another diamond and this exists, this diamond existed in world 1, I will now open a new world from 1 to 2 and that thing would be the case in world 2 world. This branch still remains open that as there were no contradictions so we write the values and then make the counter model. The counter model here would look something like uh, world 0 world 1 and world 2 but here world 0 would be connected to world 1 and since it was 1 R2 and not 0 R1 because we had this diamond in world 1 this arrow would go something like this 
the value in world 2 was p 0 so i can write not p here world 2 this is it the next question is the question is we do something like this we negate the conclusion apply the beta rule of integration finally i can see that i have a negation diamond here i'll write it as box negation then i'll open a world 0 r1 because of this diamond and write this by applying the rule m4 on 2 and then i can simplify this again uh, since uh, sorry sorry uh, since i have opened the world here i can now write that in that world this would be the case since i can use this box this is already opened world using the rule m3 and again here since i had a negation in front of diamond i wrote it is this look like this using the rule m2 and this still remains open again value relation world and make a counter model the question t we negate the conclusion uh, apply the beta rule again then this can be written as this very simply rule m1 now since we had a diamond we open a new world and in that new world this thing is the case as it is right in world one now again this can be written as this this still remains open values relation worlds and then make a counter model the last question which is uh, not the last question, u, which says that this is the case, we negate the conclusion, apply the beta rule of implication again, write this as this using the rule m1, since there is a diamond, we open the world, and we write that, okay, first we have opened the world using this diamond, you could do it any possible way, the result won't matter, the conclusion will still be the same, so, using this, we open the world here, and since that v1 is the case, using rule m4, then again, using this diamond, since there are two diamonds, two possible worlds, if you open using this diamond, you open this possible world, and say that is the case in world 2. And we open this world again from world 0, because this diamond existed in world 0. Similarly, this diamond also existed in world 0, so we could open the 0, 1, R0, R1, R0, R1 here. After opening 0, R2, I again apply the rule M4 or 4, and I write 8. Uh, this can be again written as this using rule m2 and this still remains open. We again write rows, relations, and values and make a counter model in a similar manner like you made here. Uh, the last question is negation of this conclusion. Again, uh, we have the beta rule of disjunction here. Beta rule of disjunction says that if a and B is not the case, then not A, not B. It's a stacking rule. So we stack them like this. Uh, negation diamond A finally becomes box not A because of rule M2. And negation P after receiving a negation in front of it becomes just P. Both of these are the case, but then nothing further can be done. It cannot be simplified further. And the branch remains open. We mention the words, mention the relations. Since there are no relations, we mention the zero. We mention the value, and then make a diagrammatic representation of the same, which is called nothing but the counter. Thank you so much, guys. If you have any doubt, let me know in the comment section. I will reach you out as soon as I can. Thank you.